College football big game previews brought to you by, you guessed it, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on all of these games at any of Tunica's fine five, soon to be six, incredible sports books. The Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, and opening soon, the sports book at Fitz Casino. You can get more information at tunicatravel.com. College football big game previews for week one. It's finally here. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. First one up, number six, Washington, against number nine, Auburn. This is in Atlanta. Auburn is a one-and-a-half point favorite right now. The over-under is 48. Uh, It is Saturday at 2.30 p.m. Central Time on ABC. Everybody talks about Auburn's defensive line, but Washington's was statistically better in 2017. Uh, Jake Browning against Jarrett Stidham, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Malzahn against Chris Peterson, that's a great matchup of uh, strategists. And the question here is, can Washington's offensive line slow down Auburn's defensive line and give Browning time and and Gaskin some holes to run through? How do you feel about this? I think this is going to be the funnest game of the opening weekend. I agree with that. I I do think this is the most evenly matched two teams, um, talent-wise, from coaching-wise, <clears throat> well, the the reputation of the entire Pac-12 rests on this game. It does, and you know Which what? Is it, it shouldn't, though. It, it shouldn't. absolutely shouldn't. That's not fair at all. You're playing what could be the best team in the SEC this year. And could be. They, they played for the West Championship last year. They're the one and only team that took down well, no, they, they were. Alabama. They were the West Champion last what year. They, they, well, the, they yeah, played okay. for the SEC they Championship. Played, that's yeah. what I meant. There you go. Um, they, they're the only, only team, team to, beat country, Alabama. to beat Alabama. Only like, team in the country besides Alabama to beat Georgia. Yes, correct. And so for for this to be like the litmus test for the whole Pac-12, not really a fair statement. I like Auburn this year a lot. We've gone through this when we did our SEC West breakdown and previews. Um, I, not not a knock on Washington. I think Chris Peterson's one of the top three or four best coaches in all of college football. He's building that thing up at Washington his offensive mind is second to none um I've he's got, he's got a pretty good defense oh no no they're, they, build, now, they're building that they yeah. also lost their offensive coordinator but Correct. I feel like this was Peterson's now, it's Peters, offense it's Pe- I never really worry about when the head coach is the genius at something if that coordinator leaves it doesn't really ever scare me do you think it gets in the Auburn players heads that they have lost their last two games at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. No, that's so dumb. <laughs> oh, God. You know I had to ask I, it. These guys don't care where this, they I, play you're that. You're probably right. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a talking head story for people who have to do this for a living and cover that, like seven hours of, of And we've only got to do like a like two yeah. or three a week. Either that's way. Right. Number 14, Michigan at number 12, Notre Dame. So this are we is, picking these games? Are we yeah, just, are we mean, just talking about? I them? think we're just talking about them, right? We're not gonna we're not gonna make a pick on the big games. Uh, look, if if you want to pick for me, like I would think that Washington would come These in and win that game. These are not our gambling picks. These are not but, our gambling picks. But give me a pick, man. This is a big game. I don't want you giving me okay. Tulane and Tulsa. Washington. All right, straight up. I got Auburn. Let's go. Keep Let's rolling. go. Number 14, of course you got Auburn. You got him in the playoff. I do have him in the playoff. That's, a, That's correct. <laughs> number 14, Michigan at number 12, Notre Dame. It is a pick em. This is at Notre Dame Stadium in South Bend, Indiana. The over-under on this one is close to the same number as that Washington-Auburn game. It's 48 and a half. Then I get in there. It is Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. Central Time on NBC. These are two insanely stout defenses returning nine starters each. The biggest changes... For each of these teams, for Michigan, it's quarterback Shea Patterson, Boom. and it is Michigan offensive line coach Ed Warner, right? For Notre Dame, easy. Defensive coordinator Clark Lee. Like, will he be as good as Mike Elko? I understand that he is an Elko guy. He was the linebacker coach. He's been with Elko forever, right? Not, not forever, but you get the point. Um, I think that Elko was super important to this team. The biggest number that you got to pay attention to here, if Notre Dame cannot throw the football, if Brandon Wimbush is not good, if his accuracy is still below 50%. <laughs> That's not good, by the way. Look, their three losses last year, they averaged 1.49 yards per carry against Georgia, 3.03 yards per carry against uh, my, uh, yeah Miami, Miami. Mm-hmm. 3.5 yards mm-hmm. per carry against Stanford. And they, it wasn't much better against LSU, and they had to win that one on just like a, a fluke thing. 
Okay. Ian Book, right? So, I mean, give me give me your thoughts, and then we'll give some picks. I like Michigan. You know, I like Michigan. Like, I'm I making the playoffs. Yeah. I think they're. I think they are top to bottom going to be better. This defense is going to be one of the best defenses in the country for Michigan. ESPN's I, FPI has Notre Dame winning this by like six or seven. Points. I know, I know, and I just can't understand how that is. That's fathomable. when we when we had Felico on the show, and like I've texted back and forth a couple of times, and I'm still surprised that. Michigan jumped all the way out to like a three and a half point favorite at one point. I mean that line moved ten points. Yeah, it moved ten points in like a couple of weeks. And man. and I mean, now like, it is back to a pick 'em. It was they were up by three and a half, and now it's back to a pick 'em. It feels like the public is going back with Notre Dame. So how much of this is just fans of each team wagering oh, back I, and forth, or I is definitely this definitely like, think the gambling line is is. I think all the sharp money got on Michigan when they were the six point dog. And then everybody oh. saw value with Notre Dame at plus three yeah. and a half yeah. and jumped so, on that. So, so they're just trying to, and all the all the pros are just trying to middle it. And now all you got to do is uh, pick a winner. You just got to win the game. I like Michigan. I, I think Jim Harbaugh is a better coach than Brian Kelly. That's that's factually correct. I, I, <laughs> I, if, I don't know about factually. That's absolutely correct. I t- <laughs> One guy coached in the Super Bowl, <laughs> and the other guy coached at Cincinnati for a while. Well, the guy, the other guy coached in the national championship game, and Jim Harbaugh hadn't done that. <laughs> okay. All right. All so, right. So get into a I, I national like, championship game is harder than get into a Super Bowl. I like Michigan. Okay. I like Michigan. All right. Louisville against number one Alabama. Alabama is minus twenty four and a half in this game. Uh, the over under right now is sixty and a half. That opened up at fifty three and a half. It has moved seven points, so the total has jumped way up. You might want to be careful if you think about taking that over. Uh, it's at Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida. Saturday, 7 p.m. Central Time on ABC. Puma Pass. It's his debut for Bobby Petrino. Can Louisville's offensive line stop Bama's front seven? That's a big question, right? They gave up 33 sacks in 2017, and that's even with Lamar Jackson's ability to scramble and, and get out of the pocket. Uh, if so, they're, all three of their wide receivers are going to be playing on Sundays. Correct. Like That's just bottom line. They got talent. They can all make big plays. And... Alabama's secondary is completely inexperienced, right? No. Like they've there's there's two guys, three guys I think that have they have played college snaps, right? Trevon Diggs like started at cornerback last year, got beat out by Levi Wallace, didn't start for the rest of the year. So, but he's he's played. Uh Deontay Thomas. Thompson, sorry. Uh he's played. But you know, how what what does that mean, right? Uh, the other part of this, can Louisville's defensive line stop Alabama's rushing attack? Because if Louisville doesn't have the football, they can't score. Uh, if Alabama can run the football a ton, how much does Jalen Hurts play? How much does Tua play? Like, all of this comes in. Um, Louisville last year, they gave up over five yards of carry to Clemson, Kentucky, and Mississippi State. Those were the closest on the schedule last year to what Alabama does uh, and even then, you're talking about Kentucky and Mississippi State, so it's a different different ball game, I guess. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I like Alabama. I don't know if I like them minus twenty four and a half. That's just a whole lot of points. There's, and there's, Saban rarely covers the big lines. There, right? I will tell you this: there's no way on earth I would lay twenty five points against the Bobby Petrino team. That guy's going to score. Yeah, if, if, he's going for to score. you to, for you to cover twenty five points. You better score seventy or eighty. Yeah, you because have to put he's going to score 30, 40. I mean, he's just. Gonna I, put I don't up, think he's going to put up thirty not, or forty. That, that's an exaggeration. But so, I could right. see three touchdown. Like, yeah. say you got three broken plays in that inexperienced second. Those those big receivers get away. Those monsters aren't getting caught. Yeah, at that point, like if say Louisville scores twenty one points, you that's still right. got to score forty eight right. or forty six or whatever. Gotta, you got to hit fifty. Yeah, you got to hit a lot. And so I, I, I if I'm, I'm picking. Uh, uh, against the spread here, I'm I'm taking Louisville, and it's not close. I, I would probably take Louisville as well. Uh, it, now, I do expect Alabama to win comfortably, but, you know, because I think they're going to be able to run all over these Oh, guys. I agree. Oh, I completely. I don't think they can stop the run at all. So. Uh, the issue is whether or not uh, Juwan Pass is going to get time to throw the football. If he can, yeah, they can make some plays. If he can't, oh, yeah. well. Uh, number 25, LSU against number 8, Miami. Miami is currently a three-and-a-half-point favorite. They were a three-point favorite, and money started moving in. Uh, they Look, the over-under is 48. It opened at 45-and-a-half. 
I'm kind of surprised with these two teams that the line or the over under has gone up. I just think fans like betting the over. Probably so. Probably so. Uh, this is at Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas. It's on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Central Time on ABC. LSU starts quarterback Joe Burrow. It is his first ever start, and it's against a Miami team returning their entire back seven. They were number three in the country with 31 takeaways last year. LSU is the second least experienced team in college football. They are number 129 ahead of last place Colorado State. Uh, can Malik Rozier improve on 2017's 54% completion percentage? And, you know, like he, he was only not even 2-1 to one in touchdown to interception. He's going to have to play well. Like, bottom but, line, but LSU he, is he, not he, hurting for talent. No. It is experience that they do not have, and Miami does have experience. So, Mar- and Mark Rick. Mark is Rick a is a coach. great coach. They're going to be better this year on offense than they were last year just, just because Mark Rick – is their coach, and he's been there another year, and he's he's worked with these guys one more year. Their defensive line is not super experienced. Man, they, they've got they three out of four guys are new, to be. Uh, and that's that's what I was going to get at because I I don't think you have to be there. I think uh, it, they've got some serious talent. So yeah. LSU's offensive line better be up to the task because this is the first year that the Tigers don't have a big time running back coming back, right? Like this is a completely unknown and you would think that they will just find somebody, but that ain't always the case. It's not, it's not just as easy as just walking outside and saying, all right, next man up. What was, what was the article that you sent me earlier? Uh, with, I'm not getting, we're getting, we're not getting, well, no, that. I'm, I'm asking I don't that because it. I'm wondering if, I don't want to get into if that. If that plays into, no, it doesn't play into any of this. It okay. We're not getting into that. Scratch that from the record. <laughs> it's one, it's one guy's opinion. Okay, and, and there's no rumor to it. There, are, there's no yeah. There's, there's not no even, facts. There's not even a root. There's definitely no facts. There's not even a root. It's just what one guy thinks might happen if things go bad at LSU. We all work under the assumption that if things go bad, or drum won't be back after two seasons. Okay, that's that's the gist of it. Throwing out coaching names as to who might take his place today. Oh, I'm not talking about that part excessive. of it. I'm, I'm talking about for Orgeron if he is. If there's already articles out there saying, but that's from a guy that's not connected. He's just a CBS dude that's got to write an article, man. Okay, that's all it is. It's not a knock on him, but it's absolutely okay. no reflection of the program. No, I'm not saying it's a reflection of the program. I'm I'm curious whether or not Orgeron does he every, already feel heat? Every coach is day to day, Gary. Okay, every single coach in college football is day to day. Okay, okay, let's move on then. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's not move on. Let's make some picks. You got LSU winning this one? No, I don't have them winning. I think they'll cover the three and a half. I think it'll be close. I think okay. I think I think Mark Rick is good, and I think that Miami's better than them. I think Miami is better. I think I I'm probably going to take Miami at minus three and a half. I mean, I think it's like a touchdown game. Yeah, I would. I would low scoring. I would. Like, just, I would definitely I just, go under the uh, the forty eight. I'm going to take the points. Anytime LSU's catching points, I'm going to say they got a chance to win any game they play. And I'm gonna take the points. I'm uh, I'm gonna go under the 48. And I don't think I'm gonna pick a, a, like if I had to choose a gun to my head, just, just, Miami. Just to be fun and go back, Alabama, Louisville. I'd go under the 60 and a half. Yeah, I think, and I also go. I think Bama, I'd go Louisville plus 24. I think Bama is gonna run it too much to, to score a lot. Yeah, Michigan, Notre Dame. They're not getting close to 48 and a half. Right? No, not a chance. There's no way both those teams score 24 points. No. I no, think no, no, no. I think these are two really good defenses, and we don't like, need, I, know I about the see this yet. Twenty-one seventeen kind of game that wouldn't shock me, but yeah. but both of them in the twenties is crazy. What do you think of Auburn Washington? Two um, good defenses, but two offensive minded coaches. Forty eight and a half too. Two guys that like to take risks, yeah, but two they're defenses. Not, they're not afraid. But two defenses that can absolutely, if you take too many risks, those defenses can. I think we'll see like a, a defensive score. I could see that game going over the forty eight. That's the one that I'm not touching the total. The other ones I, I feel like I like the total. Like I yeah. I know what, what I'm doing. I will have money on the under, the under, and the under. Yeah, I could see that. Uh last last, last, last big game. game. Number twenty, Virginia Tech at number nineteen, Florida State. Now we are using the AP poll for this, uh and that will change in October whenever the college football playoff ranking comes out. Or we'll just do our own damn ranking. Uh, uh, who cares? We'll do whatever. Okay. 
Uh, Virginia Tech at Florida State. Florida State is a seven and a half point favorite. That opened up at five and a half and and then jumped up. Uh, the over under right now is fifty seven and it opened at fifty. Little surprise at that. It's at Dope Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee Monday night, Labor Day night, seven p.m. Central Time on ESPN. Florida State coach Willie Taggart's first home game. DeAndre Francois returns from injury. He was named the starter this week. Uh, these are two equally inexperienced teams. Florida State is number 71 on the experience rating in the country. Virginia Tech is number 88. Florida State secondary only starts one upperclassman. The question is, can Josh Jackson take advantage of it for Justin Fuente's team? If I had to bet, I'm going to go with Virginia Tech plus the 7.5. But that's because I like the hook here. Virginia Tech is minus 7.5. No, Virginia Tech is plus 7.5, buddy. You're looking at the wrong thing. I checked it this afternoon. No, buddy. It, it, Florida State at home is minus seven and a half. I am okay. telling you. Telling you. Um, I would take Virginia Tech plus the seven and a half. And if you thought that Virginia Tech was minus seven and a half, you were going to jump all over that plus seven and a half. Yeah. Aren't you? Yeah. I knew yeah. it. I knew it. I'm, I'm, I, I, can't, I can't believe I, And, I mean, I could easily just have read the, the wrong thing. I'm going to guess you might have because um, it is definitely Florida yeah, State I, minus I, seven and a half. I like Virginia Tech on the money line. Then just take them. On, I would. I would have laid the seven and a half. You like them in in Taggart's first game at Duke Camp. It's his first game with this team. Yeah, one guy has been with his team for a couple of years. He's built this team. He knows this team, and they know him. Willie Taggart's been there for five minutes. Now you got and a point. this team was incredibly undisciplined and not tough at all. And now, I ain't trying to get you all fired up. I'm just saying. I, like I like Vitek this year. I like him a lot. Oh, I know you do. I oh, mean, you, my you God, got him, I like him a lot. You got him in the, uh, in the playoffs. I got him in the playoffs. Better believe that. Let's do a, a, a rapid fire of some of the honorable mention games. Florida Atlantic at Oklahoma. Does Lane Kiffin have any chance against Lincoln Riley's bunch with Kyler Murray in his first start? No. Not a chance. You, you think they cover the 21? I think they keep it close. I don't know. I think Florida Atlantic's got some boys. Three scores. I don't know. I I think they keep it within within those three scores. I would like to see that. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's an eleven a.m. game on uh, on Fox. Uh, is it FS One? Fox Four? Uh, whatever it is. Uh, Texas at Maryland. That's another eleven a.m. game. Texas is a thirteen and a half point favorite. Uh, there's a lot of mess going on at Maryland right now. Yeah, but I DJ think, Durkin ain't gonna be back for this. I don't, I'm not worried about that. I think I think these guys are gonna be ready to play. I like Texas to win the game. I don't like them to cover the thirteen and a half. Yeah, Kasim Hill, uh, Maryland star. I guess you could call him quarterback. Uh, before he got hurt last year, he He's was really running good, all over Texas, and he destroyed Texas. Tennessee against West Virginia. This game is in Charlotte. This can't is a two thirty game. Didn't make our big game list. I just can't believe it. Well, I think it's because Tennessee was so bad last well, what year. What? Oh God! Come I'm, on. I'm just saying. Like, they don't have Butch Jones anymore. Who, who do you not, want them over? What What game do you want it over? You don't. You don't. Want Louisville, to Alabama, right? Because That's, one game is a twenty five point spread. Well, there's a reason that one of these was a two thirty game and the other was a seven p.m. game on ABC. Like that's. There's a reason. What do you want me to do? I'm not. I'm not the one that makes the schedule. I am the one that picked the games, though. Tennessee and West Virginia, who you like? Tennessee is plus 10. Is it 10 and a half now? Yeah, it's 10 and a half now when we made our picks. Plus our 10 and a half. half. It was 9 and a half. I like Tennessee. I like Tennessee to keep this real close. I am the complete opposite. I think they can sneak out the W. Too. I think West Virginia is going to be putting up points like crazy. Okay. I don't think Pruitt's got the right guys that he wants yet. And it's going to be a growing year. I think they'll get better as the year goes. But right now, I think they got they got some trouble. I like West Virginia minus that 10.5. I wouldn't bet it. I wouldn't touch it. But if, if I had to pick it, West Virginia minus 10.5. Boise State at Troy. Group of five championship game. Winner this is going to be in the New Year's Six. No, I'm playing. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> but I like Troy. Uh, you know I do. We'll, we'll get but in you, on uh, – you, you absolutely know I like this Troy. Is, this is on one of my gambling picks. We'll get to that in the, in the last segment. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like Troy. It's a ten and a half point spread, and Boise State has to come all the way down to Troy, Alabama. Give me a Neil Brown win. There you go. Ole Miss against Texas Tech is the last game. Ole Miss is plus two and a half. It opened up as a pick'em. This is in Houston, and a lot of people think that it's a Texas Tech home game. That is so not the case. Like literally, it's like eight and a half hours from Lubbock to Houston, and it's like nine hours from Oxford to Houston. So it is literally right in the middle. 
Ole Miss's defense isn't great. They're going to be better than Texas Tech's defense, and Ole Miss can score points. I don't know what the over is. Take the over and take Ole Miss in the points. I agree. I agree. Bam, I didn't think you would. That wraps up the big game previews.